team like Kyrie and KD Or the Lake Show with King James and AD Wish I could match him up with the bad boys from the 80s But no black and white, I need that in HD Yeah, dog Yo, what's good y'all? It's your boy Ant Hen Dog and we back to it. You know how we do it. Shout out to the Bird Gang. I mean, this is not a Larry Bird video. This is a Boston Celtic video. But yo, yo, Celt y'all Celtics is doing y'all thing in the in 2022, man. This is this is cool to see. You know, I've been doing a lot of Larry Bird reaction videos. For the people that, you know, just watching my videos for the first time, you know, shout out to y'all. I appreciate y'all for watching. Um, as of late, I've been doing a lot of, you know, old school basketball, a lot of Larry Bird, a lot of Magic Johnson, Michael Jordan, and, you know, I've gotten a lot of Larry Bird fans, to, you know, to start watching my videos. So it's kind of cool to, you know, see the, the 2022 Celtics doing their thing, man, and that's what this video is. This video is how Jason Tatum and the Celtics have stormed the league, and I'm excited for the Celtics, man. Over the last, you know, three, four years, the Celtics has been one of those teams that I like. I always said I thought like they had a chance to do some. I thought like they always kind of came up short over the last few years, but this might be the year, man. You know, everybody talking about Brooklyn, everybody talking about Philly and all these other Eastern Conference teams, but hey, Boston doing their thing, man. So we're about to get into this video. Shout out to Thinking Basketball. Thinking Basketball is one of my favorite YouTube channels, so this is why I'm going to start reacting to more of their videos. So let's get into it. We got... How Jason Tatum and the Boston Celtics have stormed the lead. Let's get it. The Celtics are rolling, sporting the best point differential in the Eastern Conference and a 20 and 6 record mm. with their current starting lineup of Marcus Smart, Jalen Brown, Al Horford, Rob Williams, and resident superstar Jason Tatum. That's the squad. Boston now boasts the second best defense in the league over the course of the entire season. And since December 30th, the Celtics are outscoring teams by a whopping 11 points per game. Mm. We recently discussed the Time Lord roaming away from the ball. He's on a spot-up wing here and can unleash his weak side shot blocking. And Boston tries to keep Williams in particular spots on the floor. Again, he starts on a wing and switches to the dangerous John Morant, but that's just to keep him low. When Morant pops out the other that side, Boston switches again, and this is so coordinated that this defender doesn't even need to look to switch onto Morant. From there, Williams stays in the paint against a big and uses his shot blocking gifts to send it into the stands. Mm. The Celtics also use the triple switch where three defenders are involved. Tatum switches onto Morant, but Smart doesn't take his man, instead going to the corner, and Rob slides in to take Tatum's man. This can work That's because smart. Jason can hang with Ja, who doesn't even try him on this play, and it ends up in a really well-defended shot. In the Brad Stevens era, Boston would switch like this to protect small guards like Kemba Walker. There's Smart sliding down, so Kemba can triple switch back to the diminutive Kyle Lowry. But there's no small guard to protect anymore, so these switches are about weaponizing the defense. Smart and Rob exchange behind the play here, keeping Williams in the paint, and since Nick Claxton isn't a threat in that spot, Smart can sit on Kyrie Irving's right hand to... I like that because most of the time when, 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 when players switch, it's because of a pick or an off-ball screen. Like, it's kind of something happening, which is the reason why, you know, you switch with somebody. But in these instances, like, they just, they're just smart. They just know what they're doing. No pun intended. Is Marcus Smart out there doing his thing. But they're smart. They, they know, like, if a person just, just walks to the, walk to the room, if a big is guarding another person, we can just switch that. Just go grab him. And that's what Boston Celtics do. I don't know what other teams do that. Because it's not really that easy to just be able to just switch without feeling like you need to. It's kind of just like a straight strategic type thing. But it's working out for them. So maybe more, more teams should start doing that. Help Rant Williams. Rob can control the paint if he gets a step. 
and Smart sinks perfectly inside Claxton, and the whole thing is just a defensive clip. That's great defense, man. Smart is now Boston's smallest player most of the time, and he loves switching onto most big men in the post and holding his ground because he's a 6'3 bulldog who can guard bigger positions, which helps avoid any mismatches from all the switching and lets Boston set the pieces behind the play the way that they want. And I, I'm one of them people that I love Marcus Smart. I, I feel like a lot of people always kind of talk bad about him, don't think he's as good as he is, but I've been rocking with him for a while. And it's not because of his scoring ability, it's just because of the the approach that he, that he that he brings to the game, like his mentality, his energy, like you people people are not like that in the league. You know, you gotta you kind of gotta be like born with it, or, or just you gotta you gotta be built different to have that mentality that that he has. And I always the type of person to respect them type of players. And on top of that, he's like the longest tenured Celtic. He's been the longest tenured Celtic for like years, and he's not even that old. So. I think mean, that's even more of a reason for Boston fans to, to really love, you know, Marcus Smart. Like he he go he'd give Boston his everything if he could. We've talked about Marcus's all defensive value before, blowing up screens at the point of attack. It helps to have a savvy veteran like Al Horford out there too. Mm -hmm. And yet he can guard the post and provide some paint protection with shot blocking or sliding over Send and taking charge. charges. That helps him rank Ouch. sixth in the league in forced turnovers per possession. He can also make some mind-boggling reads. He and Grant Williams are preparing for Morant to come off a screen, but instead DeAnthony Melton slips to the hoop and Smart somehow arrives at the same time the ball does, which is enough to save a layup. And then Grant is nimble enough at six foot six to stay with Jaw in a packed paint and destroy his shot attempt. Mm. A huge key to all this switching is how interchangeable the parts are. The 6'6 Brown passes Kevin Durant to the 6'6 Williams, and now look at the floor. Rob can roam off his man to deter a drive, and if KD goes to his sweet spot, Smart can dig over and bother the shot, and that ends up in another oh, forced defense. turnover. This is all excellent coaching from rookie Ime Udoka, making sure his switch defenders aren't exposed Ooh. on an island. Or Who is that coach, y'all? You know, give me some little background information on that coach. I don't know much about him, but he obviously know his defensive principles or at least understood what Brad Stevens was doing and continued to do that. But kind of give me a background. You know, did he play? Uh, where, did he, where did he coach at prior to this? Just give me a little background on, on the coach. Herford switches onto Irving. Rob can roam off the corner to help, and Smart is trying to move up into Kyrie's other driving lane, and his little stunt there toward the middle is enough to trip up Irving. Oh, come on, Kyrie. On this one, Morant is passed all the way over to Tatum. On the inbounds, Rob and Smart switch this ball screen so Williams can come off the weak side, and Smart is up near the elbow again to help build a wall against Morant so Tatum doesn't have to guard him alone in isolation. And that's another excellent defensive trip until a loose ball foul on the rebound. Mm. Boston's personnel makes this system work. Jalen Brown is a physically sturdy wing who can guard perimeter players well. What happened? And while he's better on the ball what than off it, he's still big enough to offer resistance in the paint on switches and in help. Then there's Tatum, who's a tapered six foot eight, and he adds length and rim protection on the back line, yeah. and his man defense has improved too. He has the strength to bang with bigger forwards down low. He also uses his- That one right there, you know, I'm, I'm the most non-biased person, unless it comes to Kobe Bryant, might be a little different story, but that was just Katie just missing that shot. <laughs> he definitely shouldn't have missed that, and if you give Katie that shot 10 times, he'll probably make it eight length wisely, walling off KD briefly here, and then forcing a turnover by poking it off Kevin's hand. Oh, no, that's good D. Durant that's did get Tatum right a few times this game. He gets a step and Jason can't recover. And notice the difference in rim protection See, with Rob Williams that's up KD, high man. instead of sitting on the opposite block. That's also Kevin Durant. On the very next I know trip, who that is. Tatum really locks in though, picking Durant up high sliding his feet, okay. and then because of that length, okay. it's just about impossible to guard Durant better than that. That's a good scouting report right there. 
Because I feel like everybody in their in their mama knew that KD was about to come back and do the, the jump shot. But Jason Tatum is also 6'9". He's not the shortest guy. So KD can really do that. on uh, if, if you're 6'7 or shorter, like even if you know that KD is going to do that, he's going to still rise over you. Nothing he can do. But that was a great contest by Jason Tatum by, also, by knowing what he's going to do and also being like 6'9". His defensive agility and footwork has really stood out at times. Later in the game, locking up Kyrie in isolation, and it helps to have defenders behind him in the lane, but Tatum's physical tools do a ton of the work there. Okay, Tatum. Of course, Jason is the centerpiece of the Celtics' offense, and after an incredibly bumpy start to the season, he's scoring 29 points per 75 possessions on a healthy 59% true shooting since December 1st. Mm. More importantly, his decision-making has tightened oh up, my God. and he's making quicker choices while slowing the game down. Here, he hesitates on an extra pass, and that turns into a contested jumper for Brown. Or on this Derek White drive, when Tatum gets it back, he yeah, record scratches like the entire offense, but White had relocated to the corner for a wide-open three. Compare that to some of the masterpieces he's authored lately, where in Philadelphia, he touches along that extra pass instantly, leading to a wide open look. Okay. Or on this play, he catches it and goes right away, only to spin into traffic and quick dish it to the corner for another open triple. Teaching point for this video, kids, or grown, grown men, or whatever. Don't be a ball stalker. Don't be one of those guys that they were explaining that Jason Tatum was uh, prior to these last couple videos. Like, the worst thing you can do on your team is be a ball stopper. Like, I, I hate those players, and I'm sure other, other basketball players hate to have those players on their team. Like, it messes up the whole flow of your offense when, you know, you're moving the ball and everybody moving it, touching the scene, and then you got that one player that grabs it and just holds it, start filling on it and, you know, caressing it and, want to go behind the, behind the back between the legs and like that that that's not good basketball so you see what happens when he when he stops doing that you know every every everybody on his team starts playing better so it's kind of a recipe for disaster if you want to be if you want to be a ball stop I've talked about Tatum's development as a playmaker before but this is about more than uh, that this is about his tempo his control of the game at his speed while making the right decisions. Mm -hmm. Hockey he turns the corner off the screen here and is methodically reading this corner defender while dribbling in traffic. And since he never slides over, it's a lob to rob. Lob to rob, I like that. <laughs> I took it, I took it, lob I took to it. Rob. Later in the game, it's a similar situation. And the second the corner defender moves in, he punishes him with a laser off of one hand for a Horford That's a jumper. Great pass. This is the Horford art of knocking playing down. slowly while acting quickly. And Boston's offense is better for it, with a 118 offensive rating with Tatum on the floor since December 1st, which would look like a top 10 offense mm. in that time span. Jason is also such a big body that he's able to hold off defenders while pushing his way into the paint to find his spots. This is similar to how Luka Doncic uses his big frame to go where he wants with a live dribble, even all the way to the rim. You can also see his control in how he handles traps, calmly right using now. his size to pass over the top, which leads to another open shot. Hockey assist. He's doubled in the post here, and again, it's a relatively quick action to find the open man, and then some nice extra passing from the Celtics brings it back to him in the corner. Boston has enough connective tissue passers to take advantage of Tatum's quick attacks. It was Horford there moving it along to a shooter. And on this play, the Nets throw a ton of defensive attention to help the overmatch Seth Curry, and Tatum flicks it to Smart, who instantly moves it to the corner Hockey for assist. a Jalen three. Hockey assist. I think Smart teammates. has actually been a huge key on offense, too, playing a more traditional facilitator role as the point guard which helps reduce Tatum's load. Smart's not much of a scoring threat himself, but he's good enough to run certain pick and roll actions and set up nice. teammates. He's probably Boston's best pure passer, 
So he can read a dynamic opening like this when Rob dives to the basket. And Marcus's decision making has been better this season, passing up borderline shot attempts for himself to set the table for his teammates. By the way, Grant Williams can absolutely stroke it on these spot ups. He's at 44% from three this season and 51% from the corner. So, if you're keeping score, the Celtics have multiple bigs who can stretch the floor as shooters. Most of them can pass as well, either from the top or in more dynamic situations oh, like this. And Smart at point guard frees up Jalen Brown to do what he does best, which is score and finish plays. Brown isn't nearly the playmaker Tatum is. You don't want him playing a ton of pick and roll, for instance but he is excellent on sharply attacking from the top like this hey. or coming off ball for unencumbered isolation touches in his sweet spots. The other big thing Smart does by playing point guard is he keeps that defensive lineup so big with multiple rim protectors and all those switchable similar parts that communicate and work together so well. I'm not sure where the Celtics are going to finish in the Eastern Conference standings. They've climbed all the way to fifth. But between Ime Yudoka's coaching, their defensive personnel, and the continually expanding brilliance of Jason Tatum, they look like a team that has enough to make it all the way to the NBA Finals. They to got support a chance, this channel, man. check out Patreon. They got a chance. Like, I've been saying that. It's, just, it's up to them for real. But... I think that what makes them such a great team is the way they're able just to switch. And Marcus Smart being at that forefront of that defense, like it's a recipe for something that's excellent. So I appreciate y'all watching, man. Make sure y'all subscribe to the channel if y'all haven't already. Make sure y'all like this video if y'all like this video. And write some in the comments. Write what other videos y'all want me to react to. I'll be reacting to more videos like this. I think these are dope. And it kind of keeps us in the loop of what's going on in the, in the current NBA. So I appreciate y'all like always, man. We out.